Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming today. It's certainly been an unusual, busy couple days here in Alexandria. My name is Tony Castrilli. I'm the Director of Communications for the City of Alexandria, and I just want to give you a, a brief rundown of the game plan here this morning. Uh, we're going to have remarks from the mayor first, Alexandria Mayor William Ewell, followed by remarks from Alexandria City Manager Rashad Young. Following Rashad's remarks, uh, the mayor, the city manager, and city attorney James Banks will be available for questions here at the podium. I'm sure you'll have a few. Uh, all the information that we present here today will be posted on the city website this morning, alexandriaba.gov. We are also recording this news conference and we'll post it on the city website a little later today in case you have any follow-up questions. And lastly, of course, you can call me and I can take care of any of your questions later today. So with that, Mayor Yule. Well, thank you, Tony, and um, good morning to all, and welcome from this bright, sunny day here at City Hall. I um, want to thank you all for coming, and um, first of all, as you know, the City Council approved the Alexandria's Waterfront Small Area Plan last January. Um, seems like it was just yesterday, but it was precisely just about a year ago. The Waterfront Small Area Plan envisions a vibrant vista with public welcoming uses connected by green corridors and open space. It is a framework for revitaliz revitalizing Alexandria's waterfront through several means, one of which is ensuring compatible development. Over the year since the small area plan was approved, city staff have been hard at work designing the flood mitigation, parks, promenade, public spaces, but these public improvements cannot fully become a reality without private development that is also envisioned by the plan. City Council's vote on the plan came after a long, intense, and sometimes contentious process, which included litigation. That litigation regarding zoning implementation is now preventing the plan from moving forward. Earlier this week, City Council took steps to overcome these barriers. On Tuesday, February 12th, during an executive session, City Council provided guidance to the City Manager, indicating that he should request the Planning Commission initiate a text amendment to implement zoning of the waterfront plan. This process will culminate in a public hearing and vote both by the Planning Commission and the City Council in March. In short, City Council wishes to take this action to affirm our approval of and commitment to implementation of that plan. Here are some of the reasons why we think this is necessary. This move provides an opportunity to move forward beyond the litigation. It makes the plan real by creating zoning standards for private development that will fund the public amenities in the plan. It ensures that implementation moves forward in a comprehensive way not project by project, and it reflects the will of the people who elected us and supports the development of a beautiful, economically sustainable waterfront that all Alexandrians can be proud of and enjoy. And now you hear more details from City Manager Rashad Young. Thank you, Mayor, and good morning uh, to you all. Uh, as the mayor indicated, the waterfront small area plan passed by city council in 2012 provides us with a vision for our waterfront. The litigation currently underway prevents the plan's vision from becoming a reality because zoning is a critical part of implementing the plan. Based on the guidance provided to me by city council during last Tuesday's executive session, I'm asking the planning commission to initiate a text amendment that will implement zoning of the waterfront plan. At the same time, I'm asking that we move forward with clarifying the language of the zoning ordinance that applies to text amendments so that it will be clear to both us and the community as to what would trigger a city council supermajority vote in the future. This action provides us with an opportunity to get beyond the litigation. We are agreeing to meet the supermajority standard that the litigation opponents are asking for, even though we don't think it's required. This is a positive step in moving the plan forward. It ensures that implementation advances comprehensively rather than in a piecemeal way. The vision of the plan is to preserve and protect 
the special character of the waterfront, and we want that to be done comprehensively throughout the entire plan area. It makes the public projects and activities envisioned by the plan real by creating zoning standards for private development that will, in turn, fund the plan. These standards will also ensure the highest quality of design, the kind of quality that meets the expectations Alexandrians have for their waterfront. These standards ensure that we attract the right kind of private investment and the right kind of projects. In addition to pending litigation, there's no guarantee that there will not be added delays and appeals that could drag the case on for a long time. We believe the majority of our residents recognize the value and potential related to the implementation of the plan, especially as it relates to our long-term economic viability. Therefore, it's vital that we take this action based on City Council guidance to affirm and advance the implementation of the waterfront plan as expeditiously as possible. The Planning Commission public hearing will take place on Tuesday evening, March 5th, and the City Council public hearing will take place on Saturday, March 16th. At this time, we'll entertain a few questions. No, no, this, this action, Pat, is not um, a determination of the, the litigants um, interpretation of the zoning code. What the city council wants to do is move the issue forward, move beyond the litigation, and so it's agreed to hold itself to a standard that we still, in fact, believe they don't need to meet. We believe that a supermajority vote was all that was required to, a regular majority vote was all that was required uh, to make this text amendment effective, but the council is going to agree to the supermajority vote in order to move this forward. I don't understand the, the text amendment. Can you the, the text amendment implements the zoning over the entire plan area. Uh, and what one of the disputes is what, what vote count is required to do that. We believe it only should take four votes of city council to make that text <coughs> amendment and implement that zoning. Um, there are opponents that believe that six votes are required uh, to make that implement the zoning over the entire plan area. So you have to get the zoning going, but that's different from the lawsuit? I mean, are two different things? The, the lawsuits are over the issue of zoning, zoning. and how the zoning applies and, and how the protest petition which triggers this supermajority uh, was conducted. And the, and, and the, the, the zoning itself and, uh, um, sets established as legal standards for um, moving forward in terms of height, density, um, design, architecture, open space. So those are the reasons why we, you know, uh, the, the need for the text amendment. Uh, Mayor, uh, of course, the, um, uh, the city council has changed since last uh, January and probably will be much easier to get supermajority on this council than it was on the previous council. Um, doesn't this open um, the city up for more lawsuits by, by having this do over? Pat, do you know what? Um, we've been at this for more than 40 years and no matter what action or decision um, this council, past councils or future councils take relative to the waterfront or any type of development in the city for that matter, it's always subject to some type of um, litigation. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really not about the litigation as, a, as opposed to um, doing what is right and moving forward for the benefit of the citizens of the city. And Pat, have, you, have, have you done a vote count? Have you, do you have the supermajority? We have not done a vote count now. Pat, let me add that on the, um, we certainly don't believe, we, we certainly don't believe that any of the actions that council is taking now would provide any a real cognizable legal claim in addition to what uh, the opponents have already raised. But realistically, we understand that, uh, you know, people differ in their views of these matters and, you know, one of the hallmarks of the American judicial system is creativity. And so we cannot... Uh, deny that there may be some creative minds that can come up with additional claims which we have not anticipated. So we expect that may in fact occur. But we don't believe that, that we have created any new actions upon which any existing claims could um, be based upon. Well, on uh, Pat's question, I've got one about timing. Why do this now? Why not October? Uh, why not November 5th? 
Well, <coughs> the issue is the council has made a decision to move forward today. The fact is there was an exhaustive process that even got to plan adoption. Uh, we've spent over a million dollars in fiscal year 13. Uh, we're proposing to spend at least a half a million dollars in fiscal year 14 to move forward with elements of this plan, including things like flood mitigation, uh, the Union Street uh, um, uh, analysis that has been done. Uh, so there's lots of work that we're trying to do to move forward this plan. And absent um, the zoning implemented in a comprehensive way, in a way that provides the connectivity, that funds the public improvements that we're looking for, uh, that creates the open space that we're looking for, then we're really at a deficit of moving forward the implementation of the plan. So the waterfront plan, when it was passed, was articulated as a priority for city council, a priority for the city. So we have a plan that's adopted policy of the city, and now we want to be about the business of making that implementation occur. And let me just add as um, additional commentary is the fact that, um, you know, there were over 100 meetings over a two-year period um, to get to the, the plan concept to the city, both the Planning Commission and City Council. And then even after that, the plan, the city, after it passed the Planning Commission and it got to the City Council, the City Council further delayed it by another six months to allow an implementation work group um, to come together to further offer some refinements to the pro to the plan itself. So there's been a lot of time and, 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 and additional input um, from all, all sectors to um, what we ultimately decided on when council voted January of 2012. Any others? Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, of course, what we're talking about here is a technical way to remove the technical objection. Let's go to the waterfront plan itself. Mayor Ewell, you supported it. Make the case to the citizens you know, whose eyes have glazed over now after all these years of arguing. As I recall, the city wants to allow somewhat more density in those spots, and people who live nearby and other residents of Old Town say, no, no more density, let it go. Make the case. Why should the city permit somewhat more density? Why? Well, it's economically beneficial to moving the, pro the, the, the waterfront process uh, forward. And, the, the, and as a matter of fact, um, you know, through this process, we'll have the, uh, the ability to control the amount of density, um, ultimate total density that will come as a result of um, the, the, the plan moving forward. Uh, again, you know, there will always be folks that don't want anything done to the waterfront. But, you know, the, 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 again, two year, more than two years, 40 plus years of discussion and input have gone into this process. And um, so there's nothing that um, the, the action that we're, we're, we, the council has requested the city manager to do in order to move this forward is, is, is nothing different than what we have been talking about more recently for the past two and a half years. And the reality of it all is, is that it's time to act to move forward because we have to focus our attention, we the council and the, 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 the citizens in, 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 uh, of this great city, on other matters that are coming before us. I mean, we, the focus can't just solely um, be uh, waterfront. We got the west end of the city. We got Eisenhower Valley. We got Potomac Yard. We got uh, infilled in terms of you know the, the middle part portions of the of the city um, to continue to look at. And so um, you know it's it's the, the timing is right and all the more reason why we've given direction to the city manager to move it forward. One question for the city manager. Uh, you mentioned that the lawsuits were standing in the way of the right kind of public investments or the right kind of project. Can you name some specific developers that have expressed an interest in the waterfront? Um, no, I can't name any specific developers that are interested in the waterfront. The plan uh, speaks to a vibrant waterfront uh, that really we think is good for Alexandria. A vibrant waterfront is important to the city, and it's about trying to do a couple of things. One, from a long-term perspective, take an underutilized asset and leverage it uh, and so that it adds economic vitality and energy to the community, and that also helps us, frankly, provide services across the city to the extent we can balance out the, the, the property tax burden that's disproportionately residential right now and more commercial, we do better in providing services to the city. Those services on a commercial basis are, frankly, less expensive for us to provide also than it is a residential basis. So the waterfront recognizes it is an asset. Um, and so the plan looks at a comprehensive way to leverage that asset that is both inviting and open to the public, but also balances that against 
uh, a commercial opportunity. You mentioned the right kind of projects earlier. I was just wondering if you are looking at any specific projects. No, that, con that comment was really in the context of saying we don't want a waterfront that's overdeveloped, that we want to have balance there, that we want to preserve and respect the character of its location in Old Town and the other uses that are in Old Town, residential, other retail uses. So this isn't sort of a project specific issue for me. When I say the right kind of development, it's recognizing the historic and unique nature of the waterfront and its sort of uh, intersection and congruency with the rest of Old Town. So you're not looking at any specific projects or working with any specific developers right now? I am not working with any specific developers. There's a, lots of interest being expressed, lots of people talking about doing deals. Um, there's nothing that's on my table, that's in my pipeline, that addresses specific development, although there has been interest expressed, absolutely. Does this timing have anything to do with the Washington Post putting Robinson Terminals on the market just 10 days ago? No, it does not. This conversation actually uh, started about how we might want to proceed and move beyond this litigation, how we might want to implement the zoning in the waterfront well before this announcement occurred uh, with respect to the Robinson Terminal sites. You mentioned there was interest expressed. Who expressed it? Uh, everyone knows, or not everyone, it is common knowledge that there is an hotel developer uh, that's looking to develop a hotel uh, at the waterfront. Uh, but that project hasn't been approved by me, it hasn't been endorsed by me or my staff. Certainly they've had conversations with the city and planning staff about what's allowable, uh, what it is they can do, and so we, we know that's out there. Residents know that's out there. That's not something that we're trying to hide or walk away from, but this is not driven towards one hotel. Uh, frankly, it is not about one specific project. It's about having compatible development, leveraging the waterfront, and protecting and respecting the unique, the uniqueness that is the waterfront in Alexandria. But more, and more additionally, you know, the the, the, the waterfront plan that uh, has already been approved by uh, the prior, the previous city council um, uh, address the need to um, um, move forward with. The, the right kind of development um, so that um, we can address the needs in terms of connectivity, accessibility, the open space, address the flood mitigation, all those things are, are important. But the other thing I want to resp <coughs> uh, respond to is in, in terms of, you know, has there been expressed interest? If we don't move the process forward, you know what, there may not ever be expressed interest because no the prospective developers or, 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 or investors may not want to do anything in the, uh, on the waterfront simply because they don't know what, uh, you know, when, it, when uh, action decisions will be made uh, and they're not sure what they'll, you know, benefit from it as a result. So, um, to move, and again, this is not a process that will, with the waterfront plan that, you know, come a year, two years that everything is going to get built out. We've said from the very beginning, it's a 15, 20 year or longer process, but we need to be able to be generating some um, uh, tax dollars, revenues, so that we can move forward, we as a city, to do the things that the citizens want us to do on the waterfront, like open space and like the flood mitigation. Mr. Banks, will this actually move um, the process forward? Um, the lawsuit goes on. I understand it's scheduled before the Virginia Supreme Court sometime in the next uh, month to six weeks. Um, uh, how will this move the process forward if the, the lawsuit continues? Pat, um, as you know, the ultimate remedy that the opponents have been seeking uh, in the lawsuits is a revote on or a vote that is, meets a supermajority requirement by the city council. Uh, we hope that city council's actions will be able to end the litigation earlier than it would otherwise end. But as you know, um, there is no cer certainty in litigation. We would make the appropriate motions before the <coughs> courts and then they will just simply decide. When, when is the case scheduled to go before the state Supreme Court? <coughs> uh, the case before the state Supreme Court has been stayed. The, we have been, um, the, the Supreme Court has really deferred action to the circuit court. The circuit court case is currently scheduled for April 8th and 9th, and the Supreme Court specifically um, asked the circuit court to move forward, and it, it currently is not moving on this case until the circuit court uh, decides. That's all your questions. We can wrap this up. Uh, there's one last one, I believe. Uh, are you aware, you were mentioning flood mitigation, are you aware of the fact that a Hurricane Sandy would decimate the entire waterfront and that our flood mitigation efforts that we've made here have only uh, developed protection to the height of six feet?
above the Northern Virginia uh, National Historical <coughs> Data. So in reality, we're looking at a situation <coughs> where we're going to get flooded and we're going to get hammered. And all the development that you want to put at the foot of King Street and at the foot of Duke Street is going to get wiped out. Certainly aware of that, and um, you know, uh, Hurricane Sandy presented a lot of um, eye openers, not just for us locally here in Alexandria, but for the for, for the entire East Coast in terms of the type of development and where you place development and so forth. And certainly, that's something that uh, uh, of, of concern to not just us, but it should be to builders and investors and everyone else. Certainly. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.